up, made a mill in a minute. Gang banging, I killed the lieutenant. Dope boy, and I'm still winning. Still rolling on Nolansville. Shoot out the window, yo, hold the wheel, then keep riding. We know the drill from Nashville, still a river wreck. Keep a semi with me, I'm a bust. That. It's me, it's me, Simba TV. Bang! What is good, YouTube fam? It's your boy Simba coming back here again with another reaction video for you guys today. For today's reaction video, we got top 10 drunk Peter Griffin moments. Let's jump up in it. Where am I? Hey, those guys are backwards now. Get away from me! Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 drunk Peter Griffin moments. We did it, Brian. Ugh. For this list, we'll be looking at the most entertaining scenes driven by the inebriated antics of the Griffin family's patriarch. Minor plot reveals are discussed, so consider this your spoiler alert. Which boozy bit cracks you up the most? Drop your take in the comments below. Now on to some Peter Griffin drinking shenanigans. Number 10. Peter has one too many on Thanksgiving. Has I feel your dad that. ever ruined the holidays after having one too many? If you're a Chris Never Griffin, had a dad, the so answer I don't know. is a hilarious yes. What's your favorite preparation of a tomato? Is it sun-dyed tomato? When a friend's son mysteriously returns from Iraq on Turkey Day, Peter shows he supports the troops. Sort of. With some of the show's best anti-war humor. Kevin, you know I put a yellow ribbon on my car for you guys? And, and a little thing that says, I support the troops. Because there's nothing I wouldn't do for you guys. But I don't have any change on me right now. After that, the very inebriated big guy proceeds to epically ruin a friendly game of touch football with more cringy but true humor. Okay, so here's the game. I'm I'm drunk, and I'm going <laughs> to throw the football too hard at my kids. Oh, yeah, do we have to... Ah, don't cry. He not only pegs Chris with a football multiple times while bystanders awkwardly Yo. watch, but teases the poor kid to boot. Maybe it's time to ease off, huh? What are you talking about, Lois? Dad's getting drunk on Thanksgiving is a holiday tradition. The bad dad defends his behavior with a sardonic cutaway going to the worst kind of tradition. An unbroken chain of intergenerational violence stretching back to when hats had belts. That's it. The belt is coming off. Number nine. Peter becomes the brewery mascot. When this sitcom dad first saw inside Pawtucket Brewery, it was a world of pure inebriation. will be tanked like the whole Irish nation. Things continue that way while he worked for the beer maker. That is, until his boss, Angela, voiced by the late great Carrie Fisher, died. We're going to put a flag on you, and wherever you go, people will know that's where they put their recyclables. Please don't just throw them over. His new dual bosses seem to have it in for Peter before hearing him drinking on the job and John. What are you doing? Playing a game on my phone and having a beer and, God willing, going to the bathroom. Instead of getting canned, Peter becomes the brewery's mascot. I'm in. Oh! We did it. Seeing him shoot a commercial on a less than luxurious New England beach and suffer through other absurd travails while guzzling his favorite beer is pure comedy gold. Wanna cool it with that drumming? Anyway, do you have to water your house? Cause I would think that, you know what, let's just forget the conversation and just pose for the picture. Alas, the fun and carbs come to an end when Peter learns it's a dog eat dog world in the mascot game. Let's hear more from the dog. Ah! <laughs> Number eight, Peter's first day. When the Griffin family's breadwinner needs a job, he takes the old adage of doing what you love a little too seriously. Turns out there's a job opening at the Pawtucket Brewery. After just one visit to the unemployment office, Peter scores the perfect gig, working for his favorite brewery. Even better, that never works his new employer out. <laughs> gives workers free beer. We just ask that you don't drink during your shift. That won't be a problem, sir. Like a fat that fox never in works house, out. our lovable Lush manages to screw up his new career before even getting his ID badge. Mr. Griffin, since you can't control your drinking, you've been demoted to the shipping department. Oh, come on! This is your new supervisor, Angela. The speed at which the big guy gets hammered and nude is comically absurd. But it's the realness of his drunken outburst that causes us to sneeze schnapps all over the TV. Originally aired in 2005, this bit still stands up, which is more than we can say for drunk old Pete. Dad, what the hell are you doing? Uh, yeah, hey, buddy. 
Uh, I'll have a triple cheeseburger and a large fries, and uh, you sell pants. Number seven. What? Peter's piano. You ain't got no pants. This time, Petey isn't solely to blame for his boozed-up shenanigans. Peter, that's incredible. I don't understand how you're like the idiot from Shine. Instead, his wife's desire to upstage her rival at a piano competition. I anybody seen that? Why was Meg chained to the piano? Shine. Instead, his wife's desire to upstage her rival at a piano competition just a ironically slave? leads Lois to become the big guy's biggest enabler. It turns out he's a regular Amadeus when under the influence. Huh. I think we found his muse. Oh my god, you can only play the piano when you're drunk. Well, maybe that's slightly overselling it, as his repertoire consists solely of television theme songs. That... Nonetheless, his staccato performances Was that are the Twilight impressive. Zone? <laughs> so Lois feeds him drinks to maintain his buzzed flow state. Uh-oh, Lois, I'm losing my buzz. I need more talent juice. By showtime, Peter is so inebriated that he can't find the piano. <laughs> Nonetheless, after a loud belch and a little assist, he plays one heck of a lick. Many simple yet effective sight gags help set the scene apart, as does Lois's role reversal. Number six, Peter and his friends give Meg a ride. The guy's drinking session is cut short when Lois asks the pee man to pick up his daughter from the skating rink. We'll just move the party to the skating rink. Who's sober enough to drive? This annoys the middle-aged men who seem particularly sloshed and rambunctious. Dad, where have you been? I've been waiting for over an hour. Grab some wood there, bub. Daddy and his friends have been drinking. When Griffin and the gang finally arrive, they're an hour late and proceed to ignore Meg while causing more trouble than a pack of drunk teens. After that, the scene culminates in a roller disco dance number for the <laughs> ages. <laughs> hey! hey, hey. Hey, yo, I don't care what nobody say, man. Getting drunk and, like, bowling or, like, roller skating or something like that is, is so fun with your friends. You know, so much bullshit happens. And I apologize for myself and my shenanigans and anybody that's seen Drunk Simba out because that's a whole different person. <laughs> Fat man may not win dad of the year and probably should have his license revoked, but he sure can boogie. This sequence is comedically right because it's so wrong on every other level. That was awesome. Oh my God, that was completely by accident. Packed oh. with killer cutaways, crude jokes, and some fly animated choreography, this bender is a definite winner. Number five, Peter and Joe trade cars. Seeing Quahog's biggest wino trade quips and vehicles with his buddies may not be squad goals, but it sure does split our sides. After all, Real friends tell you when you're being a douche. Also, how is Joe driving that car? Because it's, don't you need, like, a special car to drive since he's paralyzed? And how did Peter drive his car? I got so many questions. Case in point, Quagmire shows up inside a bar with sunglasses on. Hey, guys. Yeah, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Ah. Hey, not allowed to do it. Peter and his cop buddy Joe have none of it in a genuine yet Ooh. jocular moment. After hilariously deflecting Quagmire's written call for help, the big guy and Joe trade keys, completely failing to grasp the concept of a designated driver. Okay, Joe, Joe, you're drunk. Okay, you're drunk. Give me your keys. And and I'm drunk, so I'll give you my keys. What? Okay, now we're both good to drive home. Simultaneously what? risque and dumb, part of the wry charm is thinking of how much it probably infuriates the mothers against drunk driving Yeah. Crowd. Watching Mr. Griffin play cop is a cathartic gag that never gets old. You been drinking tonight, sir? Uh, no, officer. I sat His a eyes. To dinner with my wine. Okay, I'm going to get in the car and walk a straight line, please. All right, you'll be safe, sir. There's a lot of crazies out there tonight. Number four, Peter <gasps> damages company property. We've seen Papa Griffin buzzed and trashed, but never quite so ripped. 
In an episode featuring three shorts inspired by popular directors, the best is saved for last. Fight with so many quick shots and close-ups, you can't tell what's going on. The final chapter combines the excitement and incoherence of a Michael Bay film and the drunken annex of our favorite family man. While he may have traded his dad bod for a chiseled physique, his love of alcohol and trouble are strong as ever. The search is underway for a man strong enough to throw a keg with enough force to save the seven wonders of the world. The short opens with our muscled main character tossing kegs onto his back until he punches one open and chugs it. <laughs> Curry! This leads to his now sexy boss firing him. Though, not before they French. It makes about as much sense as a Transformers sequel, but it sure does make us laugh, too. Number 3. Peter Bonds with Meg Of all this surly sire's questionable parenting moments, his talk with Meg about the dangers of alcohol is one of the most memorable. I'm starting to sober up, so I'm going to need one to keep an even playing field. All right, but it I stays between us. It may sound like buzzkill, gotta, but Peter's constant stream that, of non sequiturs and cookie cutaways keep things lighter than a diet white claw. Party all the time! Besides, the fatherly talking to nearly instantly devolves into an intergenerational drinking contest. They parody Jaws and Raiders of the Lost Ark, while Eddie Murphy's song Party All the Time proves it's still an insidious earworm. Yo, Meg, you gotta relax. She gotta relax, bruh. She, d d what was, what was that all about? Yo. <laughs> I can't believe they put that in there. Lost Ark. I Eddie can't Murphy's believe song, it. Party all the time. Proves I don't know why I'm surprised. I know. I really don't. What? Bruh. Whoa. Yeah, get her out of there. You gotta get her out of there. The piracy add to the whimsical fun of this booze fueled romp. <laughs> Most of all, we love the vicarious thrill of watching this Griffin family duo break all the rules. Number two, Mr. Booze Song. Hey, I already seen this movie. Let's talk. Let's talk about other movies we've seen. That's an excellent. That's idea. me in the theater. Many Family Guy episodes <laughs> feature the titular characters' love Woo. of the sauce. But none do it with quite as much musical flair as this one. Where am I? <laughs> hey, those guys are backwards now. Get away from me! It opens on Peter and his dog Brian drinking while obnoxiously talking in a movie theater, leading them to be forced to attend AA. Somewhere in Quahog, there's a kid not being picked up from baseball practice, and it's all thanks to us. Rather than learning, wow, the big man that's, corrupts the that's group, true turning and dark. it into a secret speakeasy. Naturally, the noise attracts cops. You will wind up wearing cat shoes if you match with Mr. Booze. Ever resourceful, the drinkers disguise their scheme with one of the show's catchiest musical numbers, parodying Robin and the Seven Hoods. When Peter dies while driving home drunk, death gives him one more chance after showing him the dangers of alcoholism and sobriety. Here we are. Well, everything looks fine. Ooh. Ooh. All right, family, line up for cigar burns. Still, what? nothing tops the humor and unforgeability of the toe-tapping Mr. Booze. That's a shame. What a shame. Who's to blame? Well, Corey Haim, his name is Mr. Booze. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few other honorable mentions of Peter getting a little too drinky. Joe's hair gets caught on fire. To the clown. Yo, you, what, your hair looks stupid. <laughs> your hair looks Peter stupid. Peter gets his license picture <laughs> taken. Well, see, I got drunk and then got my picture taken, so that way when I get pulled over for drunk driving, I look the same as on my license. You know, and then the copper, the copper will say, oh, you're fine. You're not drunk. This is you normal. I can tell by the picture. Peter, <laughs> this a baseball is you normal. Game. I can tell now by the picture. Have the only exciting thing in the game happen as soon as I turn my <laughs> back. Bruh, why is that such a thing? That is so true, bro. Rich Peter buys a round. Hey, Horace, another round for everybody. Yeah! Gosh, Peter, you're really being generous with your money. Hey, what's the point of being rich if you can't share it with your pals, huh? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and true ring the shit, bell man. to get notified true about our shit. latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, 
Peter competes in a drinking contest with his real father. Peter, have you been drinking? Family Guy is at its best when it's the worst, and this episode is exhibit number one. <laughs> Grandpa! Oh my God, is he breathing? Somebody call an ambulance! After accidentally committing patricide, Peter discovers his real dad lives in Ireland. Unlike his judgmental, teetotaling stepparent, the big guy's biological father turns out to be the town drunk. Top of the mm. morning, ladies. Let me catch you an Irish roll. Makes a lot of sense, huh? <laughs> While our rotund protagonist normally barrels over anything, Mickey McFinnigan proves nearly his equal in bad parenting and drinking. Why? <laughs> Seeing Peter finally meet his match is satisfying, but it also means the humor flows from the plot and characters rather than cutaways. Tennessee, Tennessee, Morrison, Shaughnessy, Riven, and Rooney, they'll tell you the same. When the two finally face off, the jokes really feel earned. Packed with offensive stereotypes and culminating with a musical bar fight, it's easy to see why this scene is peak Peter. Irish lads are all infirm and our moods infect us like a germ Cause we're all the spawn of a pickle sperm And we don't tan well either From a drunken Irish dad Do you agree with our picks? Whoa! <laughs> Yo, man, if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me Thank you guys for commenting, sharing, and subscribing And I'll see you guys next time Peace